Hello, I'm Gavin Howey, and you're watching an exclusive video for froknowsphoto.com. Now, today I've been lucky enough to get my hands on one of Jared's fantastic live music photos. It's one here of uh, Mattis Yahoo. Great picture, and he's given me the chance to do really whatever I like to it. But today I'm not going to go wild and overboard, which I have a habit of doing sometimes. So let me show you what you're not going to see. Okay, you're not going to see anything like that. Okay, we're not doing that today. We're not going to do this either, which is a shame because that's quite nice. And uh, we're definitely, definitely not doing... Oh no, the one I've just lost. Where is it? <laughs> it's got to be this one. We're not doing that one either. <laughs> Thank goodness for that. That's terrible. So what are we going to do? Well, we are going to do something fairly straightforward, fairly simple. Let's just open up the raw file again. Because this is one of those images that when you press the button, you know instantly that you've got a winning image. It's an absolute cracking image. Super. So what am I going to do to it? Well, probably not a lot, to be honest. There's a few things I'm not so happy with. If it was mine, I'd like to lose the little lights down here, either edge, and um, the finger looks a little bit bright as well, and, and maybe a bit of a crop, because that's where I always start. I always think about cropping my images. Now, if I was sending this to a magazine or a website for publication, I wouldn't crop it. Let them crop it if they want to because they might want to put some text or graphics on your image, and if you've cropped that area away, especially this area at the top, which is perfect for putting a magazine banner across, I can see this as a, a cover image, then if you've cropped that away, they can't use it. So this is going to go for a portfolio, at least in my mind anyway, so let's get the crop tool, because we don't need that area, and we can also lose those bright lights left and right, because really, that's the main part of the picture just there. That's the bit we want to see. Um, what else do we want to do here? Well, uh, let's do colour next, because the colour, the halo around him looks fantastic. I mean, perfectly timed, great shot. But look at his skin tones, it's yellow. I mean, you can't do anything about it when you're shooting live music photos. This is what happens, it happens to me. That's the light, that's the colour. But in Photoshop, you can do something about it, because we can correct the colour tones. I really like the yellow around the outside, I just don't like it on his face. So the plan is to remove the colour from his face, make that neutral, and keep the colour everywhere else. How are we going to do that? Well, we could try white balance. Let me think. I could try um, tungsten. That looks about the same. We could try fluorescent. No, that's it really. I'm, I'm stuck there. I'm not going to get a white balance that's going to work. I could manually control the temperature. Um, that's, that's not too bad. That, that looks pretty good. Or, and perhaps more preferably, I'm going to get the white balance tool, click on something that's a known grey, like his jacket, and then hopefully that'll correct the white balance. Yeah, that looks pretty good. In fact, if I just zoom in a bit, because we're really interested in his face, that's the bit we're concerned about. And I could click on his beard, actually. That's a bit cruel, isn't it? I, could, I shouldn't say that, but he's got a bit of a grey beard there. So, um, yeah, that actually gives the best white balance as well. How ironic. Um, right, OK, so that's the white balance set. Wasn't so keen on his finger. Here we go. Look at this finger down here. Uh, down here, he's got his finger where it's just coming into the light slightly. And as a result, it's looking a little bit too bright. Okay, real close up of the finger. So let's just get the adjustment brush. And we'll set the exposure about minus one and a half stops, something like that. And we'll just paint back his finger like so. So we have some detail in there. It's amazing how much detail you can bring out the highlights on a raw image. It really is a little bit big. Let's just tidy that up, erase that bit. There we go. So that's looking pretty good. Yeah, that'll do. Okay, so finger looks better, colour looks better, at least on his face and on his skin. What about the noise? This image was shot at 8,000 ISO. 8,000 ISO, that, that's unheard of from just a couple of years ago, those super high ISOs. And the quality is fantastic. If we go and have a look one-to-one -one pixel, I mean, that is super smooth noise. That's more like 800 ISO from my Canon from a few years ago. Fantastic. Nonetheless, we can get it better, so let's grab the, the detail tab and we'll take the luminance noise down a little bit. That's going to smooth out those tones. Um, there's also a little bit of colour noise, which is this kind of blue speckledy effect. And that's really there because I've pushed the white balance really hard. So we need to take the colour away with the colour reduction 
What are we up to there? About 60? That seems to work pretty well. OK, and we can open that image. Am I going to do anything else? Actually, I'm just going to put a bit of contrast in. I'm just looking at it, and I think it just needs a punch of contrast. Brilliant. OK, so there we go. We're going to come out of Camera Raw, and I'm going to go into Photoshop and uh, bring that image into Photoshop. Now, if I was do doing this in Lightroom, I'd right-click the thumbnail on the film strip, choose Edit in Photoshop. OK, so that's one image. Um, let's go back and do that again. And we'll repeat the process for the colour around the outside. Now, fortunately, I don't need to change anything else. I only need to change the white balance to As Shot because Camera Raw will remember all the other changes, like the contrast, like the noise reduction, and it'll save me having to repeat myself. And when I open the image, it'll save it as a duplicate image as well. So I get the best of both worlds, really. This is kind of handy. OK, there we go. So we now have two. We have one where we've colored corrected it, which we'll select and we'll copy and we'll paste that onto the other one. So we now have two layers, one where I've color corrected it and one where it's the original as shot color. OK, now the plan is to bring the color on the face back. And to do that, I'm going to use a layer mask. So I'm going to hold the Alt key or the Option key on a Mac, click on the layer mask button and we'll mask that down like so. So all we can see now is the color corrected image uh, sorry, the, the original colour image, getting confused. And if I get a paintbrush and I make sure I have white as my brush colour, I can paint onto that layer mask that's hiding everything. And when I paint white, it will reveal. So white reveals, black conceals, like that. There we go. So we can just paint that down there, like so. Lovely. And the advantage of a layer mask is simply that I can get a smaller brush and change my colour to its opposite, to black, and paint back any areas where I'd actually like it to stay yellow. And it's gone on his... There you go, that's it. And if I got a smaller brush still, I could actually do this slower and more accurate and get it very, very neat. OK, so now we have the right colour actually on this chap. Mattis Yahoo, is that the right name? Did I say that correctly? I was trying to avoid saying it in case that's wrong, but I think we're OK. Right, so there we go. So that's looking pretty good. It is a little bit strong. It's definitely a little bit too much of a difference between the colours. So I'll just drop the opacity of the colour corrected layer down to 70, 80%, something like that. So it kind of blends in. So here we have before the As shot, the Jared Polin fantastic shot. And here's the, the Gavin Hoey tweak, just a little tiny tweak. Right, OK, there we go. So that's pretty much it. Let's just stick a little border around that. Fantastic. And there you go. So there we go, Jared. That's my interpretation of your picture. Honestly, it's a winning shot. Didn't need much work doing to it at all. Now, if you want to find out more about me, check out my website at www.gavtrain.com. Thanks for watching.